Well, good morning, everyone. Um, looks like we kind of plateaued with everybody joining, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Josh Morgan. I'm the city engineer for the city of Danville. I, I met a few of you all the other day when I was walking around with, with Mary um, trying to get this meeting set up. So I want to let you all know I, I am recording this meeting and we'll have it available for anybody that wants to watch it later on. Um, so so we'll have that if, if, if you know someone that wasn't able to attend today, they can watch it later. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to quickly kind of my goal with this meeting is just to make sure you all are are a part of our process in this in this streetscape design. Um, you know, it's we want to we want to do what's best for the city of Danville for the, when we when we change our this is our this is a big deal. This is our one shot to to get this right. Um, and it's going to be this way for a long time. So we want to make sure that we have your all's input. And we're doing things appropriately. So I'm going to hand it over to Erin Hathaway. She's with Gresham Smith, uh, the consultant that the city has hired to, to design our Main Street sidewalks. So I will, I will let her take it away. And, and afterwards, I'll kind of I'll wrap things up and let you all know how to get in touch with me um, if you have questions or concerns later on. So Erin, you can take it away. Sure. Thanks, Josh. Uh, let me share my screen for everyone. I have a little presentation that I will walk you guys through. Let me know if you can see the screen. Good? Okay, great. Uh, so thank you all uh, so much for joining us this morning. I know um, this is not an ideal situation to be on Zoom call, another Zoom call. I'm sure many of you all have to sit through them. So I thank you for your time and I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, as Josh said, I'm Erin Hathaway with Gresham Smith. Um, I'm the project manager for our team. Um, there's a lot, there's more of us on the project than just me, but I'm, I'm helping sort of organize and, and the lead sort of person that you'll see and interact with on the project. Um, I'm a landscape architect and I live in Lexington and I've spent a lot of time in Danville over the past few years. Uh, and I'll get into some of that in a bit throughout the presentation. So today, uh, you know, I'll talk to you about you know, who we are as a team, who Gresham Smith is, and how um, we're going to approach this project. I'll talk a little bit about how the downtown master plan that we worked on is influencing this project, um, how those sort of big ideas that came out of that master plan are going to, uh, or we're going to look at how we implement those right here on Main Street. And uh, part of the big piece of today is, is asking for your input and understanding what Main Street means to you all, um, and that will help us uh, determine sort of the best steps forward in this planning process. And um, with that, as I said, um, it's not just me on the project, but I am leading it with this great team that I have. They're not here today with us, but I'm sure you'll probably see them in, uh, throughout the course of the project. Um, Alongside of uh, the landscape architecture side of our firm with me is Lewis Johnson and Jared Kalen. They'll be helping me out. And then we also have um, a great team of transportation engineers on the project led by our senior transportation engineer, John Eckler. He used to work for KYTC, so he has a great relationship with those folks there. Um, and then he's supported by our um, by Allison Gwynn and also Nikki Bowden, who is a utility engineer for us. They're showing you a slide. So from um, the master plan, this is kind of where this all started. Uh, back in, I think it was very late 2019, Gresham Smith, along with Joseph and Joseph uh, and Jim Walters, uh, started thinking about uh, downtown and the future of downtown. You know, we, we spent a lot of time in Danville. We walked around the streets. We talked to a lot of people. Uh, we observed kind of uh, the different traffic patterns, the amenities that are around, how people use and interact with the streets, um, and got a good sense of um, from folks of how they were using it and how they saw downtown. We did a lot of pop-up events with the community. You, got, you all might have been uh, attended some of those. Um, you know, we, we spoke at a smart growth conference. We had three pop-up uh, events at the the hub, the library, and center college, where we asked for people's inputs, uh, different questions, and uh, some of the themes that came out of that um, were focused on safety. Um, a lot of it was talking about how people uh, 
experience downtown, whether it's walking or driving, um, talking about adding more amenity spaces and desirable places to be and uh, improving those experiences. Um, and like I said, safety came up over and over. Uh, we heard a lot of stories about people um, afraid to cross certain intersections, um, really scared about those from a pedestrian standpoint. Um, so we knew that was a major concern from the, from the very beginning. And not only um, that, but we want to think about how we can make downtown uh, inviting, activate the streets, pull things out from the buildings and uh, create spaces um, and create a more diverse experience downtown for everyone. So during the master plan, we came up with three main themes. Um, those were connect to people, places, and culture, make streets for people, and infill blocks, lots, and buildings. And I'll talk about kind of how those apply, or how I feel like those apply to Main Street in particular. So connecting to people, places, and culture. So, you know, over and over we heard Danville has such a rich history. We want to celebrate that history. It's very meaningful to us. And so how do we start to do that along Main Street, along the streetscape? You know, we have those national historic signs, um, but how can we start to pull those stories out and tell those stories, um, whether it's through different plaques that have historic photos that tell the story of what buildings used to be, or perhaps there is a narrative or titles etched into the streetscape and the pavement. Um, so that's, that's, we want to showcase that history in this project. So making streets for people, that's the um, second theme of the, the downtown master plan. <clears throat> Here, we want to make sure that we're thinking about everybody from all different types of backgrounds and ages, you know, whether it's a parent pushing a stroller across the street or, you know, somebody who's older, uh, making sure that all of those pieces of the streetscape are accessible, that they're safe for everyone. And then infilling blocks and lots. So really, how can Main Street work to help create better opportunity and investment for the future, right? So we already saw uh, the parklet that was developed after the master plan as sort of an outcome of that. And sort of how can we use those, those pieces along the sidewalk uh, to help businesses and attract those people and investment in the long run? So what are the big ideas here? Um, how can we take all that and make it into reality and create maybe perhaps something that you see on the screen here? So first off, of course, we're evaluating safety. Our traffic engineers right now, um, they're doing an analysis. They've already met with KYTC, KYTC to make sure they understand Danville and the city, want they want a better, safer downtown core. Uh, what does that mean? So we're looking at the incidents at the intersections, we're looking at the traffic counts to make sure that those improvements that we look at um, meet the standards uh, that we, we know are, are right and that we know can make our streets safer. So what does that mean? That means that um, we can reduce crosswalk distances, uh, making that safer. Uh, we can add things like better pedestrian lighting and vehicular lighting to make, uh, you know, driving at night a much more visible and safe experience. We can make sure that there is positive separation between pedestrians on the street and the street itself. We can also look at things like the traffic intersection and make sure that the signals are visible, highly visible. Um, I know that's something that we're looking into. We're looking into speeds and we're looking at um, travel lanes. We're looking at turn lanes and making sure those turn lanes are in the right locations and that the, the lanes themselves, um, if there can be consolidation or any improvements that will make those intersections safer. You know, one thing that um, the city has done is, uh, you know, we've left uh, three feet of space between the parking and the drive lanes. So how can that space that's left over there be reallocated for pedestrians? Um, creating larger sidewalks, better amenity spaces. You know, if we look at the sidewalk right now, um, you know, are there enough places to sit? Is the canopy create, created by the, sh the trees enough shade for an, an experience in the heat of summer? Um, 
So just thinking about what, what else could be out there that could improve that experience for people walking along Main Street. And of course, an enhanced landscape, we want to make sure what we put back in is healthy, it's sustainable long term. We're looking at things like hanging flower baskets, um, planting beds. And when we do put back trees, this center photograph right here might be foreign to a lot of you, but that's, it's called a soil cell that goes underground and makes sure the roots of the tree are healthy long term. So big picture overall, we have a space between buildings. Um, it's about 85 to 90 feet wide. And within that, we have a lot of stuff that happens downtown. And so we want to think about all of those things and make sure they all work together in a safe and uh, in a way that creates a great experience for everyone. So that includes things like deliveries, uh, parking, traffic, street trees, utilities, lighting. Um, you know, oftentimes we start saying, well, we want to put street trees all along here in a certain amount of spacing, but when it comes to it, there's a lot of utilities that are underneath the street. So we need to make sure that we just are cognizant of all those things. Um, it's, it's tough. It's tough to do a streetscape. There's a lot of, um, of, uh, of things that have to fit in here. Um, you know, things like cafe seating. Can we have more of that? What about parklets? You all have already experienced it. One of those, you know, how can we expand that, that, that space for pedestrians. Um, you know, we talked about history and bringing out that history. Where does that fit into this? Um, you know, is there a chance for public art? Uh, and then also, you know, I did want to mention, you know, festivals and, and, ex and event space. So the street not only have, you know, uh, allows for traffic, but there's moments throughout uh, the year where it might be open for something else, something larger, such as a festival. So I think that's a good transition to the topics that I have for you all today. And uh, what I have on the next slides here are um, some maps of the study area that um, with along with questions. And I'm hoping that we can have a discussion and I can uh, mark up on the map kind of your thoughts and, and sort of document those ideas that you all have. Let me just exit out of this presentation. So I just have an interactive kind of online board where I can mark things. And so first off, this is the uh, overall plan view of downtown. Uh, and we're looking between 2nd Street and 4th Street along Main. So I just am curious from your all's perspective, since you live and work there every day, um, where you might want to see more of these items that are listed here on the side, such as seating, bicycle parking, and perhaps there are those that exist out there and um, we can note those and or say, you know, I don't like it here, maybe it needs to move somewhere else. Um, or maybe there's a historic story that you know about that you want to tell. For example, what did the Chase Bank building used to be. I'm just throwing that out there as an example, but you know, maybe there's something that's worthy of highlighting in the streetscape about its telling its history. Um, what about the landscaping out there that you see now? Where, what would you change about that? Or where would you add more shade? Or, um, you know, there's a parklet out there now. I think it's, um, I think it's right here. Oops, let me change this down. It's right here is the parklet now. Where would we maybe put more of those or expand that kind of thing? Where might public art go? And so, you know, this is open to whoever wants to jump in, chime in, or if you feel better typing in the chat, that's fine as well. Any thoughts? I would definitely like to see another parklet in front of Copper and Oak. All right, that's awesome. So right, right around here. Mm -hmm. uh, that is definitely something I would love to see more of in downtown. And I know that's that's one of the goals of the cityscape would be to have more outdoor seating area and make it more palatable for downtown eating and, and visiting as far as that's concerned. And I know that is one of the things that we definitely are lacking on our sidewalks is they are just very utilitarian and so narrow that they're not 
you know, to sit outside right now in front of Copper and Oak or some of those other restaurants that we do have, you're right there in the middle of pedestrian traffic, right? That's great feedback. Thank you. Uh, you know, if I'd sprinkle them on down in front of the hub, in front of bluegrass, buttercream, plank. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I think you have to think about the more you put, the more of those you put in, and they're wonderful ideas, but then they take parks parking spaces and we're always begging for more parking so there needs to be a way to make both of that work so now on that i was wondering about we've got a, the city has got a large parking space um that's right there on third street that it's all permit parking so there's a portion of that parking lot there that goes to the courthouse and then there's the the that you've got your icon over right there that darker parking lot that's all permit parking so i don't know if it would be an option to create like a section of that that was public parking like not necessarily the whole lot but that there be spaces that are available there or definitely mark it clearly that after 5 p.m and on the weekends it's open parking because obviously we do still need probably some permit, but I don't think that it's, I, I know it's never full. That's the strange thing. They tell me that every park in there is rented and yet it's never more than half full and probably a third full most of the time. I, I, I would park, agree. I park there every day and there's rarely more than 10 cars. In there. Exactly. And that would be the same for the parking section there that's between third street and second street that backs up so like plank's got a section there that backs up into the patio the beer engine used to be there but that parking spot there or that parking area there is also rarely ever even close to full around here mm -hmm. it's a is very it strange shaped parking lot yeah i mean i don't know if you're going to be able to get, get the city to give up on getting paid for those permits but i mean i'm somebody that pays for those permits and i have no problem with making it free after five or free on the weekend when I, I you know most of us who, who pay to park there we pay to park there because we work there during the week during the day and i you know if, if it helps copper and oak or harvey's or any other restaurant to have a little additional parking i think that's that's a good way to consider going and in addition to that um the courthouse i hate to speak for them but i was there for many years but after 4 30 that parking lot becomes vacant except for a few um, sheriff vehicles that come and go yes i would agree i'm there every day and that, that would that's what i have found and could, we also, right could we also consider diagonal parking on main street as opposed to parallel let me there's that. even another lot behind the courthouse parking lot that you just marked Mm -hmm. That is a courthouse parking lot too. It used to be the old Ivy Cottage, over to your your left or my right. Um, yeah, off of Fourth Street, has Here. a separate entrance. Yeah, and that's not permit parking. I think there's a few people who actually rent apartments that you know park there whenever there's a space available. But well, and you're actually missing also part of the courthouse parking. So there between the two lots there that you've marked between fourth street and third street the section there that looks like concrete that there's a couple of cars that's actually still parking that's connected to either the county or the courthouse this yes okay and well, that's, some, that's some not, said something about parallel that's not, that's um, not courthouse parking that that parking area i think is specific to vip and coldwell banker isn't it nina I, I see the clerks work there all the time. Not, not in, there's, there's some very few designated right up against the courthouse. Um, oh, that is, that's addition. You are right. But this one end down here, Nina, kind of correct me if I'm wrong. This one end that's mm -hmm. closer to Main Street, that's VIP, um, a, attorney parking, people who, who actually own those buildings. That's not a county parking lot. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. That that little that little piece right next to the buildings there that back up to yeah. Main Street is yeah. not actually part of that parking lot. So all of that is pr pretty much after five o'clock is vacant because I park there regularly. Yes. But now one thing I was wanting to say that would be really neat. I don't know that it's feasible. Is we talked about putting the little parkettes in there. If you and I don't know if this is possible in essence to make the sidewalk different widths in different spots. So if you put in parallel or the the sideways parking and then interspersed that with sections of the sidewalk that bumped out. It, it would definitely be aesthetically pleasing, but I don't know and, and useful for that, but I don't know how well it would work for parking and safety. And I don't know if I was clear on what I was saying there. You mean, let me just make sure. I've, so you're saying if we bump out and come back in and bump out and come back in, that's what yes. you're asking? Oh, yeah. And that's, that's what we in if we did parallel rather than or the, the the, you're you're yeah, never diagonal. going to get people in Danville comfortable with diagonal parking. We've talked. It used to, to be diagonal. I understand. It's been talked about almost every year since I've been in Danville, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to enjoy much popular support. I don't know. It definitely increases. I, I support it. I think yeah. we get more spots, and uh, you know they do it in a lot of other cities that it's not and it's not dangerous. But uh, a lot of people worry about backing out into traffic mm -hmm. being dangerous. So I will say on the bump out situation, that is absolutely something that we will look at doing. Um, it is a way to make the crosswalks safer, right? So we're, you know, decreasing the amount of space between having to cross the road. Uh, it allows for a certain, you know, where you bump out, you get more amenity zones per se. So you could have cafe seating there, but still maintain you know, a walking sidewalk behind that that space. So absolutely, it's something that we're looking at. And and actually, from a traffic standpoint, it's it's safe. It it slows people down uh, traveling through because the the lanes get narrower, um, and so people are driving through at a lot slower pace. So it's it's actually safer from a safety a traffic standpoint. How do you deal with the issue of, because we get a lot of tractor trailers coming through downtown Danville, mm -hmm. and they have a hard enough time making the turn with the current uh, curves. Right, absolutely. Um, whenever we design those curves, that will 100% be a part of that study to make sure that traffic can easily make those turns. Now, one thing you do consider is when we are slowing the traffic down, they can make those turns tighter. Um, but that will all be part of the, the study about that, the intersection turning radiuses, for sure. I have a concern about that bump out you're showing at the corner of Main and 3rd on the south side, because that's in front of the bank, and that's taking up, those are handicapped spots, and we have a lot of handicapped customers that... Let me just mark which ones you're talking about. You're talking about these right here? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was just a example. Um, certainly, we'll make sure to keep handicap spots. And I think that anything we can do to slow down traffic on Main Street would be great because I love all the seating outside. But really, if you're sitting outside at a restaurant and then the trucks go by, it's very unpleasant. It's like you can't hear each other talk anymore. Um, so I don't know exactly the solution, but that should be part of the study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. Has there been any look at what it would be to have an alternate route for commercial traffic like that? To, to... Oh. You, you could pass local ordinance, you know, saying that they have they can't use it as through traffic. You could create like a business, but uh, route. But uh, you know, there there are alternate ways for them to get around Danville without going through downtown. It's just the most direct routes. That's what they choose. Yeah. Because we're there on the corner of Main and Third, and I mean, they even inside the building, they rattle the building. Yeah, I mean, I frequently will be on the phone with a client or somebody, and I just have to pause the conversation because they're so loud that I can't hear them, uh, I can't hear the phone over the, the diesel engines outside. Yeah, and you know, one th one part of the thinking of slowing down traffic in downtown and you know, creating these bump outs, 
and making it harder, not impossible, but harder for trucks to make those turns would discourage them from using this route as a cut through. But it's certainly something to think about and 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 think about ways that we can do that. This is really love great. We'd love to see more tree canopy downtown, if that's another topic. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I also put in the chat, um, if the city is considering any parking garage option instead of, we have so many parking lots, um, lots, of, lots of paved spaces that could be buildings. Um, I wonder if there's a, trade-off on the expense of a parking garage and what you gain if you have one. Yeah, um, one of the concepts that was in the downtown master plan was replacing a lot of this surface parking with parking garages. Um, you know, that's going to be definitely more of a long-term um, solution, but we it's something we definitely need to look into. And then I was also going to say, talking about the truck traffic, the state, the KYTC is currently designing a new, some people are aware of this, new eastern I don't know if I'd call it a bypass, but a new new route around the east side of town that may take some of that southbound through town traffic off of Main Street in 434, um, which may help a little bit with the truck traffic. So. But we do have to kind of always design for those trucks because some of those trucks are actually coming downtown to, to make deliveries. One of the things that came up in a brainstorming session the other night that part of Danville did was maybe moving, you know, figuring out how businesses could avoid putting their large trash bins on Main Street. Um, I don't know if that's something that you've considered, Aaron, but some people would love to see that they're not <laughs> they're not right next to where they're trying to eat their dinner. That's a really good point. A good topic to think about. <laughs> The problem is a lot of the businesses do not have a back door entrance. Sure. They don't have, there's no access for the trash men to get there. I mean, we do at Maple Tree, but I know there's quite a few that do not. Yeah, I know that's the case. I'm just hoping the city can maybe help think about what are the alternatives, some help. Um, bike lanes was also another point that came up in the um, conversation that the Heart of Danville had. Is that um, the lack of bike lanes, the want for bike lanes? <laughs> yes, the, 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 need, the need of bike lanes and being able to connect the bike lanes that have sort of on the campus end and then on the other end of town, but they don't go through town. Yep. Can I can I chime in a little bit on that? This is Ernst from the bike shop. Um, you know, we had this big conversation when the current uh, layout was made and, you know, for whatever reason, uh, it was sort of essentially we're not going to have a bike lane. Um, with the, with the current layout, so it's going forward without that. But for us cyclists, if you look where the parking lot, the parking spaces are, and then the white line, we say thank you. That's our bike lane, and we appreciate you being there. We wish there were some icons down, and it would function perfectly well. And if we could simply just extend that and make it uh, more official, it would be certainly very beneficial. And like it was mentioned. We have bike lanes uh, very, you know, in close proximity, other streets, and uh, it just adds to safety um, to actually have that become a little more formalized. I also like those little bump outs that are down there uh, at Second and Main. Um, I think those little, those bump outs have all the ones that have been there a long time. I think those are good examples of the safety feature that we've been talking about. At the very least, I think those at the other intersections would, would be of great benefit at 3rd and 4th Street. Um, that would be my, my input for sure. 
Thank you. Well, along with the bike paths, um, I've been told that we need better bike racks downtown. We do have some, but I don't think they're real visible that people realize that they're even there. So I, heard, I don't know if you want to speak to that as well. Yeah, we were trying to, I think they, the idea was to make them, you know, not obtrusive and sticking out uh, like big formal bike racks, but you're right, they sort of are invisible. I mean, even as a cyclist walking down the street, at times I would just notice, oh, well, there's a little I, little thing attached to that little post that's, uh, I guess, a, a bike uh, parking spot. So maybe we could do something to add additional ones to those or some signage or, or something that just, uh, again, uh, supports the cyclist uh, coming downtown and, and uh, or even after a bike, a bike ride uh, to park their bike at the at the pizza pub or uh, Copper and Oak and and, uh, and and have a have a bike. A bike rack is a really good um, way to also add public art to your streetscape. Um, a lot of Main Street communities will sort of do really decorative sort of pieces of public art that are places where you can attach your bike. So. Mm -hmm. Kind of as a mixture on the, the public art issue as well as signage for businesses and restaurants that are downtown. Um, I had been over in downtown Winchester a couple of months ago and all through their downtown, they have these, they're, they're very small, but they're very attractive and, and three-dimensional signage that are like posts that are stuck down the sidewalk kind of in between the um, flowers and, and in between the trees and shrubbery that definitely show what businesses are there in the downtown area, but they're very aesthetically pleasing in the way that they've seen them. Um, each little plaque, in essence, is what they look like. Looks to be only maybe by, you know, six by 12 inches or something. They, they were small, but they were definitely very artistically done, and it actually just added to the overall look of the downtown area, by, but still provided extra signage for the business. That's a great idea. Some of the other things that people were asking for on our event the other night, we had 14 people call for more just general seating, benches and things downtown, not just restaurant mm -hmm. bump outs, but <clears throat> places to rest, ideally under trees. And um, We also had quite a few people call for better wayfinding and signage. Um, I don't know that it's as key right there in the middle of downtown, but directions to get there or what what kinds of things are going on if you walked another block. Mm -hmm. yep. Is Wizager Park also part of this study area? Or are you just focusing on? The, the roadway it's um everything in the right of way so okay you know essentially it would be the back of sidewalk along that so there's some a little bit of integration there you know opportunity to what is that i mean that's a good question what does that sidewalk along the park look like you know how can it better facilitate either what happens within the park or the transition to the park um one consideration that um, in developing all of this and adding more seating and um, maybe having seating close to bump outs where people are eating, um, there was one afternoon I was having lunch and there was a bench near the area where we were eating. And unfortunately there, you know, the reality is, is there's a lot of smokers that are still out there. So as they sit and rest and smoke, um, and I don't know if there's a solution to that problem where the smoke drifts over when it's, there's a breeze and you're trying to eat and, and there's, mm -hmm. I, you know, I know it's a sensitive subject, but I can see that, you know, benches may, for sitting and resting, may need to be a little bit away from the park, but is all I'm saying, maybe. Mm. Be attentive to that. Yeah, I think, you know, one solution to that might just be to understand where groupings and scattered, you know, to, to get those kind of different 
scenarios of, of seeding. That's a very good point. What kind of um, uh, sort of treatment are you looking at for the sidewalks when you go to replace them? We haven't really gotten to that detail yet. At this point, we're just thinking of where is the curb line? You know, how far does it bump out? How far does it widen out? Um, certainly, you know, as I mentioned before, that those historical pieces and telling the story, well, I would love to think about how we can use materials to do that. Um, so at this point, we haven't quite thought about materials, but, you know, I'm open to, you know, if you guys have suggestions about what you would like to see all years. Yeah, I mean, this is the most historic core that we have. Um, it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places. So it would be nice to, to at least have, I mean, brick would be fabulous. Um, it would sort of help highlight the historic nature of the, of the built environment. Um, but if you, and I'm sure you've known this, you've walked it a lot, there's lots of different materials that are used now. So yeah. just having a unifying component, and if brick could be part of it, I think would really be um, special. Yeah, I agree, Lisa. I think that would be yeah. it would be beautiful. I, I've I've lived in towns that really, you know, used brick as their unifying theme, and it does warm the warm the space and make it feel much more historic. And if we go with brick, hopefully there's some way to prevent it from being such a safety hazard that it is on the streets right now. Because the sidewalk with the brick, I mean, in front of my office, we've seen several people fall and bloody their face. It's, it's just, it's dangerous right now. Yep. There, there are ways also to treat. Concrete too. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. I mean, there, there are ways to treat, treat the concrete, uh, a concrete surface. Uh, I think that's done on further down where we do do visual things that, that make it look like brick, but it's certainly lower maintenance. Uh, it, when you have those individual bricks laid in there, sooner or later, you're gonna have maintenance as we're, as we're seeing right now in the, or the lack of it, and where it becomes problematic with them heat, you know, kind of heaving up. Is this looking at all on the corner there? Um, so on 4th Street, kind of, I think we're potentially outside the area. There's that parking lot there. Um, and that whole that whole corner is really just underutilized to an extent as far as the looks on it. You know, the, the rest of the downtown area, you know, usually has big planters or mm -hmm. other things like that. And that corner right there sort of looks shabby <laughs> well who yeah. owns it and what's its current usage uh definition i think that's Anybody parking know? for the bank i think i think it's i think it's a mixed parking for the bank there this parking lot mm -hmm. there on the u.s bank yeah i think u.s bank has it yeah they own the yeah. lot yeah i'll say one you know one thing yes we are looking at the right of way at this corner okay. So again, that just means from the back of sidewalk through the street. But as part of the downtown master plan, we did identify this block as underutilized and suggested to the city that it get redeveloped. So that is one uh, outcome of the master plan. Uh, it was a recommendation. Right, because it, it does just, I mean, even just the sidewalk there could be really beautified a little bit more. And I think that is is kind of center stage to look at when they're trying to do little festivals there in the park in front of the courthouse. I think a lot of times we actually get a lot of food trucks that'll come into that parking lot on the weekends. Um, I'll see them a lot of times on Thursday afternoons, um, which is a really neat thing to have coming downtown and an excellent spot for it, considering it's, you know, it's connectivity to the rest of the downtown area. Um, it just doesn't, it just looks very undecorated, unfixed up at all, I guess. This morning. Yeah, I would certainly agree. I mean, that that it seems like with every every change or you know, like take for example the fire fire station, people say, well, what's going to happen with that building? Well, you know, they say it's not in very good shape. It'll probably get you know 
bulldozed, uh, and then again we have more surface parking space and 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 less uh, quality, attractive, vibrant business because we find another parking lot. So I mean, I I I understand the the balance of making sure everyone has adequate parking, but we don't want the downtown to be one great big uh, blacktop, you know, flat surface. And uh, you'd love to see some of these spaces get redeveloped. Okay. Well, I just I'll keep going because this is great, and I'll try to see um, if we have a couple more questions. And I know we're at nine twelve, so I don't want to keep you all later than we have to. But um, you know, one question that wasn't on the other one is, um, you know, if we do, if we don't provide cafe seating, or if your business isn't you know a restaurant, how else could your business, you know, if you're a retail or something else, how else could you use that sidewalk space? in front of you are there any thoughts there because you know dining seating is very easy one to kind of plan for could little pop-up businesses get permits to do that let me write that note down and certainly i would hope too that there would be flowers and pots and things that are showy and all along those all along those routes can i ask in lexington they've got those big planters that are i mean you can put so much color in those they're semi-permanent so it's not going to be like like a tree that's going to get and take over the space um but the, the large planters that they do throughout and then the hanging flowers just really give it so much warmer of a feeling mm -hmm. yep can I ask whose responsibility it is to take care of those planters? I know last summer they have, you have spots in the sidewalk where you plant flowers and nobody seemed to take care of those. Some were just sticks in the ground and uh, we take really good care of the hanging pots. I'm just not sure who takes care of the stuff on the ground. Is that the business owner's responsibility or is that the city's? I think it depends on where where it's located. I, I believe most of the time it is the city's responsibility. If it's planted in those old, I think, I think we did some planting in the old squares where shrubs used to be that had died that we had remo removed. Um, I wasn't here last summer, so I, I have to check and see what areas. And we're looking at in in the meantime on some of those until this this major streetscape project occurs. We're probably going to concrete some of those in, but we may try to soften those spaces a little bit with with the planners that some of them some of them that we have downtown now adding some more to that um yeah that's definitely i mean if it's if it's in the main street streetscape it's the city's responsibility to take care of those flowers and uh, you know i i'll i'm gonna do my best to get out there and check on things throughout the year but never hesitate to call up here or email me and let me know something's not looking good i mean we want we want everything to look really well so Sometimes, you know, don't don't hesitate to complain to me about things. One thing with the uh, the big shrubs that are in the some of the uh, spots now, you can't open your car door. They're so large mm -hmm. that it's a real issue for people opening their car door. Sorry, I had to leave for a few minutes. I had to change places where I was at. Um, but that that's a real issue yeah that i would agree that you know that's certainly something in the in our plan is evaluating the landscape and making sure that what we plant one is maintainable um and two doesn't cause issues like that the timeline for the streetscape project could you share some of that with us yeah um i'll let josh chime in but you know right now we've just started the planning very early on this is one of the beginning steps um and then from our standpoint we'll run probably through it'll probably take through august i would say at this point to get completed with the design and the engineering of the project and then 
I'll let Josh chime in on sort of the overall timeline. Yeah, I think we're we're going to, we're work, we're trying to have a rough cost to just a, just the scale of the cost for this project to get to the commission in the next few weeks as they prepare the next year's budget. Um, and then it's it's going to kind of be in their hands for you know the the design is is budgeted and and funded. It's just the construction will have to be a decision they make to to fund it. Um, I think the earliest you you know groundbreaking would probably be, probably be a year from now. And I know, you know Aaron just said the design would be done this late summer, but there's a lot of coordination with KYTC on their end with permitting. And there'll be some other things that'll hold us back. And also, I, I I don't know if I like the idea of breaking ground on a project like this in the middle of the winter. So I think we would we would probably, I mean, there's there's possibility something happened this fall, but I would think next spring would be a more realistic timeline of when actual work could could begin if it's funded by the commission. One other thing I, I wanted to bring up before we um, ended today was the discussion about delivery and drop-off zones. As I know that currently that is happening in the medians, as far as I'm aware. And you know, just one thing to consider if that is the right approach. Just thinking about the safety of that. Um, that can often be difficult. Um, create some visual barriers if you're a car driving through there but it also you know as a as a delivery person crossing that traffic um, can be kind of hazardous so just wanted to open that conversation up to see how you all felt about the deliveries um, and try to get an understanding of, of how we can make sure we plan for that in the most safest way possible Probably not my place to, to state it other than the fact that I walk up there. I'm, I'm in the fourth to fifth block, um, but I've, I've been really pleased to see the, the usage and it seems to be, it was certainly one of the major concerns when we changed the street on, uh, lane alignment that, that this would be a complete nightmare, but observationally just walking to and fro the bank and post office and so forth, it, seems to me like uh, it's working to a large extent now my my cohorts up there in those blocks may have some different input but i think it, it uh, as a design it's it's been functioning par fairly well and i like what they've done to try and improve the the crosswalks and the turn lanes uh it just it appreciate the attention to detail that's gone into it so far uh and, and see it as an improvement over uh what we had you know several years back um, you know, but again, I'm, I'm in a little different situation down there uh, across from the fire station. Mm -hmm. well, I've not heard any of our delivery people complain about it or anything. The only problem I've seen was like the other day, somebody was delivering at the hub and they didn't use the turn lane. They used the traffic lane right at right in front of the hub. And now that was a nightmare. <laughs> You know, at that intersection and blocking that traffic lane. But um, so far, it seems to me that the median has actually turned out to be a lot better than we thought it would for delivery. I'm really glad to hear that, Carol, because like I said, I know you're in a different situation and that's pretty much the way in and out of your place. And uh, I'm glad to hear it's, it's, it's working as far as you're concerned. And we have a back door, nobody delivers through there, but you know they could but that seems to be i mean i i don't just necessarily ask the ups driver now i don't know how like the beer trucks and all how they feel they have a lot more delivery sometimes mm -hmm. and i think that goes right along with not having back doors and the trash bins on the street it's kind of a dilemma um if you don't have a back door you have to be delivered through the front i assume i don't know Yeah, one thing to think about or to consider, um, you know, is having 
dedicated loading zones in the parallel parking for certain hours of the day. But I'm just not sure, you know, from a business standpoint, if you even have control over when those deliveries happen. Um, you know, obviously we don't, we're, we want to be cautious of the parking that's available to people and not take that away. But if it's during a certain time, early hours in the morning or um, that we could potentially use those spaces for parking or for delivery. They come whenever they want to come. And I know <laughs> like most of the food service and all, it's at lunchtime. The last thing we want to do is take parking then. Right. Okay. I will, I will tell you that when I owned my own retail business in Washington, D.C., in the neighborhood of Georgetown, we did have dedicated loading zones, um, and it did work very well. Yeah, I mean, just from my experience in, in Lexington, I know there's dedicated loading zones here where there's just certain times of the day where they're loading and then you can park in it after that time. Um, and we don't, you know, have a median where that happens or there's even a specific, you know, limited spots where it's, it, it is always dedicated loading zones. Um, you know, one opportunity we have is if we didn't want to use the median for loading zones is it could, it could be a landscaped median. Um, something more decorative and inviting and sort of a gateway. Uh, I don't know if there is an interest in exploring that. Absolutely. My concern with that is that could cause the traffic backup, couldn't it? I mean, if you, like, you know, if you get a certain number of cars waiting to make that left turn off of Main on the fourth street, they're backed up and they're now blocking Maine and we've lost the value of having to turn lane in the first place. Right. So they wouldn't it wouldn't we would not it is, lose pretty short. We wouldn't lose turn lanes. We would median between the turn lanes. Well but what he's saying is it's like right now, so when you make the turn say from Main Street on to fourth, which is a very, very heavy traffic turn there, especially during, you know, people coming in and out. So you end up with people using that median where if nobody's there doing a delivery, they end up using that median as additional turn lane space. Gotcha. So you've got part of it going straight and you've got part of that turn in there. And I mean, as far like the idea of having a dedicated loading and unloading zone sounds really nice, but I don't think we have, you know, constant deliveries in downtown. I mean, I, you know, I'm there on the corner of Main and Third. I, I see trucks coming in and delivering, but it's not something that I would say the benefit of having a dedicated loading and unloading zone, I don't think would be utilized enough to account for what you'd lose in either parking or utility. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I've, I've watched them use the, the median. I gotta say it is working surprisingly well. I had had serious doubts when that was put into place, but from what I have seen, it seems to be working. Uh, I would agree. So would I. It's good feedback, thank you. And then just, I know we have five minutes left. I just wanted to think, throw this out, if there's anything else about how Main Street could work better for you. I mean, you guys had a lot of great ideas, so we might not even need this slide. I, I was anticipating more of a shy crowd, but you all had some great thoughts so if there's anything we hadn't brought up that that you want to get out there um for us to and, and to i wanted to and i wanted to ask this group their thoughts on burying the utilities on fourth street the overhead lines across maine along fourth um we, we are looking north into that are yeah, we the, talking north the line the lines that run Josh, north down 4th Street that cross over Maine. We're looking into yes, that please. as part of this project, but is it is a very expensive thing to, to do. Um, so we, you know, we're trying to kind of gauge what the interest is in doing that. I mean, everybody would like to see that happen, I think. Um, but we need to, you know, need to make sure we're using the money. Is there is there a better way we can use our money than than burying those lines? We're looking at, you know, I think Earl, Earl mentioned this in the commission budget meeting yesterday. It, we're, we're there. 
Gresham Smith's working on a, a better cost estimate, but we're thinking it's going to be in the seven hundred fifty thousand to million dollar range to bury those lines. Give you all oh, an not idea. Not that cost those lines. So just we wanted to see what your I wanted to see what your all's thoughts were on that. How how important that would be to you all? I think it'd be down my list. I would agree. It would be lovely, but for the cost, I think that money could be utilized so much better for some of the other things that we were talking about downtown versus putting those underground. For the arts center, um, we would love to see that happen. There's a there's a big difference as you as you look at that park, Wizard Park, with or without the lines, um, and any other activation in that corridor that might be considered. So I, you know, obviously that's a, a, a large ticket item, but without in in reference to how much all the other things cost, how much money you have. So I would think um, my, uh, my two cents, it's it's relative to what your other budget numbers are, but um, you know, it obviously it would it would look nicer if it were done. Okay, um, anything else? I know we're close on time and this was all that I had for the day. So um, I think Josh is gonna give you his contact, I believe, if you don't, if you all don't already have it. Um, yeah. So that way, you know, you can follow up with any of these items that we discussed or have any other questions or things that pop into your mind that relate to this, we would love to hear them. Can, can I just make a comment, Erin? Um, this is Lisa Thompson again. Um, I think it's really, we've spent a lot of time today talking about cars and parking. And I think that for me, what's really important about the streetscape is refocusing our efforts on the pedestrian experience. Because, you know, folks that are in cars typically drive through our community. They don't stop in our downtown and patronize our restaurants. Um, so we really need to think about creating an environment that is vibrant so that people are more apt to spend more time going from a restaurant to a retail store to an art space. Um, and I just would like us to kind of think about that some more and not be so focused on the cars. Yeah, very well said. I 100% agree with you and, and I hope you know, that is one of the big goals of this project. Absolutely. And in that regard, you know, creating corridors that people want to walk to. So, you know, wanting to walk between Copper and Oak to the Art Center, um, wanting to walk down to Constitution Square, which isn't on here, obviously, but, um, you know, there's just so much that you can explore in downtown, but it seems like they're in siloed locations sometimes. And I don't think you should forget about the fourth street to Center College, because if you're trying to get students and others to come downtown, that block becomes really important for, for uh, getting traffic flow. And I don't know if that falls in the streetscape project and what's been done there is a lot better with lighting and whatever but maybe things could be done to brighten it up a little yeah it's, there's a kind of a not beautiful block and i know that there's the, the construction going on right now is makes it a little less attractive too and that'll that'll go away but i think getting past speedway to feel like you're coming into a lovely downtown there's just sort of a needs to be a beautified corridor along that route, I think. All right, well, I really appreciate all the feedback that you guys brought today. This was more than I expected and very helpful. Um, with that, I'll let 
Josh in the presentation, if there's anything else that you wanted to say before we Yeah, I just I just want to share. say thank you as well to everyone for, for jumping on here and, and talking to us. Yeah, this is very helpful to us. I put my email address and my work cell phone number in the chat. If you all ever need to get a hold of me, um, you can reach out to me. I may I may not answer my cell phone right away if I don't recognize the number, but I'll I'll check my voicemail and get back with you. Or text me. You can text me on there and I'll I'll respond. So just wanted to put that out there if you if you think about anything later on to to get with me. And like I said, we're I, you know, I'm I'm pretty new to this position, but I I'm not new to this town. I grew up here, so I'll be around. You'll see me walking around. So say hi to me and, and reach out if there's anything you, you want to talk to me about. So I guess we're done unless anybody else has anything they'd like to add. Thanks for doing Appreciate this. It. Thank you very much yeah. for having yeah. us. Of course. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.